up guys, it's Damon one two and 2 and it's teaching day. Ah yes, teaching day. In this series of videos, I take it upon myself to teach you guys how to play the card game Yu-Gi-Oh! In the past, I've had several videos where I go in depth with some of the more unique mechanics of the game, but in trying to teach my girlfriend Amanda how to play Yu-Gi-Oh! I realize just how much somebody may or may not have as a baseline of knowledge when trying to learn the game. So I've decided to do a group of videos that are extremely baseline 101 stuff for you people who are trying to get into the game that know next to nothing about it, other than maybe you've seen a couple episodes of the anime or your friend plays or something. So in this episode, we're going to be doing an extremely top level, bare bones, what is Yu-Gi-Oh? First and foremost, I must say, welcome to the card game Yu-Gi-Oh. Yu-Gi-Oh is a trading card game in which two players engage in what is called a duel, using a custom constructed deck that each player brings to the game, where you will summon monsters to do battle, cast spells, and set traps for your opponent, all in order to try to claim victory. But first and foremost, what is a trading card game? For us seasoned Yu-Gi-Oh players, the question may seem kind of obvious, uh, it is what it is, but for someone trying to get in, it's, it's actually a little bit different than other card games you might have played. In a typical card game, there is one deck, a deck of 52 playing cards. Every player in the game uses that deck. However, in a trading card game, it plays a little differently. Both players bring their own uniquely constructed deck to the game. Neither player knows what's in each other's deck. Typically these decks are 40 cards but could be at most 60 cards. There is also a 15 card extra deck and 50 card side deck but that is for a later video. What makes it a trading card game is the idea that I, as a player, can construct any deck that I want as long as I have the cards to do it. I obtain cards by buying booster packs which contain a random assortment of cards as well as some pre-constructed structure decks which allow you to get a set number of cards, but it doesn't have exactly the kind of strategy you'd want in order to claim a victory. It is up to you as the player to mishmash all of these things together into a coherent strategy in order to try to win a game. And the trading aspect comes in, let's say, if my friend has a card that I want and I have a card that he wants, we can literally trade. Because we are not playing with the same 52 card deck, it is up to us to obtain the cards that we need in order to do the strategy that we're trying to do. All right, so what are some ways to play? In this series of videos, we are going to be going under the assumption that we are trying to play what is called Master Duel's Advanced Format. This is what you'd consider a typical standard Yu-Gi-Oh game. This utilizes every known printed card in the game, as well as utilizing the official Konami forbidden and limited list of cards that are allowed to be used in a deck. However, Advanced Format is not the only way to play the game. There is also Master Rules Traditional Format, which has no banned cards, Speed Duels, which use a truncated set of rules, Rush Duels, which are uh, Japanese only at the moment and are completely different, as well as Duel Links, which is a mobile game which plays a very similar rule set as Speed Duels. As I said, for the rest of this video and every video in the series, we're going to be under the assumption that we are trying to play Master Duels Advanced Format, typical Yu-Gi-Oh! But I might do a video for those other formats down the line, let me know in the comments below if you're actually interested in knowing how to do that stuff. Alright, so what kind of cards are you going to see in a typical Yu-Gi-Oh deck? In Yu-Gi-Oh there are three types of cards. Monsters, Spells, and Traps. In each of these categories there is tons of subcategories, but the basis of your deck will be constructed of some ratio of these three card types. Not every winning strategy will have every single one of these, but you will probably at least have two of the three, just as a rule of thumb. I'll say this now, and I'll say this again a million times, for everything I say, there is a card in this game that is the exception to the rule. But in general, let's just go with this. Okay, so you've bought your booster packs and your structure decks, you've constructed your 40 card deck of monsters, spells, and traps. How do you actually play the game? In the next video, we will be going through a typical turn in the game, but as a general overview, the objective of the game is to lower your opponent's life points to zero. Each player starts with 8,000 life points and through various game actions can reduce your opponent's life points in order to claim a victory. There are other ways to win, like I said, there's an exception for everything, but predominantly what you're going to be doing is this. Going back to those three card types, monsters play to the field or summoned to the field, typically are played to the field in order to do battle with your opponent's monsters and therefore damage to your opponent's life points. 
Your spells tend to be support cards, augmenting the abilities of your monsters or getting you to cards that you need. And traps are exactly what they sound like, running interference on your opponent's turn in order to make their turn as unproductive as possible. With these three types of cards in combination, you can utilize a strategy, summon monsters to the field, and reduce your opponent's life points to zero, claiming victory in a duel. And that is your intro to Yu-Gi-Oh! In closing, there's a couple of few points I want to reiterate. I want you guys to learn this stuff now. One, it's a game. Have fun with it. That is probably the most important thing you ever need to know. Even in the most competitive of duels, it is important to remember it is a game. Have fun. Two, not every duel needs to be at the competitive level. In Yu-Gi-Oh! we have officially sanctioned tournaments that you can go to in order to play for prizes. Typically, a round in a tournament is the best two of three duels, but you do not need to play at that competitive level in order to enjoy the game. A casual game between friends could be a match, which is your best two of three, or just a single duel just for funsies. In a casual setting, it is ultimately up to you guys as players in order to determine how you want to play. And last but not least, the most important thing I can say to any brand new Yu-Gi-Oh! player is read your cards. The cards that you play in this game will explain to you exactly how and when and what they do when they are used. It is very important to understand how to read Yu-Gi-Oh cards. In a later video, we'll go through the, the format and how it is that card is literally read, but just for top level, simple reading the cards effect is a great way to give you information on how to play your deck. I know that must seem like a very strange thing to say, but you'd be surprised at how many people just know what their cards do without actually reading their cards and understanding the, the, the subtle nuance of how the card actually interacts and then they get into a weird fumbly game state when something strange happens that doesn't go their way. Understanding the minutia of your cards is important and to actually truly understand the strategy you are trying to construct. And if you're not at a tournament and you actually are not under the time crunch, reading your opponent's cards is also extremely well advised because <laughs> If you're trying to beat your opponent, it would help to know what their cards are trying to do. This is coming from a person who never wants to read anything, so trust me, do as I say, not as I do. Alright, instead of my traditional sponsor spiel, uh, anytime I get fan mail from you guys, P.O. box in the description below of every video, I open these on, on, on camera so that you guys can just know that I actually read these things and that I appreciate when you guys send me some stuff and it gives you guys a chance to get some of this good Yugi fame. <laughs> oh boy. Our first letter is from no return address, Brave. Hello, Dave Nader 1212. You are so awesome. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Anonymous. Inspired by the movie Bonds Beyond Time, ooh, an idea popped into my head. Master Rule 3 versus Master Rule 5. The players choose a format and then play using said format. In regards to the unused extra monster zones, in the case of Master Rule 3 versus Master Rule 5, the MR3 user is required to link their way to it. Understand. Okay, so you you basically mean the Master Rule 5 player has the option to you link if they are able. Understand. What do you think of this idea? Who do you think has the greatest advantage? If this was a real tournament, which format would you opt for? Thank you, stay awesome. Not signed by anybody. Anyone who's watching this video because, you know, they're actually trying to learn the game is going to have no idea what this is talking about. But those who are just watching my video because it's the video that I put out, thank you. And for this is actually something that you're going to care about. It's a very interesting idea. The problem we run into is that MR3 and MR5 aren't wholly different except for the fact that in MR3 we don't have link monsters. The real question would be, do each format use a different card pool? Because if not, then they're kind of... Uh, the biggest difference is just uh, whether or not I can pendulum summon five for my extra deck or not. Uh, other than that, they're other than that, they're pretty much exactly the same. And if it's the case is that card pool, uh, it also would understand if whether or not you have a different band list. Uh, I would probably opt for Master Rule. Personally, I would probably play five just because I like some of the link monsters. But if I was a good player and understood how to play like Pepe or something, I would probably opt for three because you could probably build a stronger deck. All right, and next up we have uh, one from Eric. Ugh. It is a PS2 Future Tactics The Uprising box. Let me guess, there's probably not a PS2 game in it. No, there is a PS2 game in it. <laughs> I have, a, I have a feeling that this may or may not be actually for my other channel, Enemy Controller, uh, which we do Let's Plays on and stuff like that. Um, and I do have a capture card, so 
had uh, I been supplied a PS2, I could totally play this. Given that I don't have any, uh, you guys didn't run a note with it. I don't exactly know what you want me to do with that. I'm assuming that's what it is. If that's the case, then I will definitely have to play this because my knowledge of PS2 games is, is pretty sparse. So I was always a Nintendo kid. So like this would be a wholly new experience for me. So thank you very much, Eric. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. And any newer players, welcome to the game. I, I'm glad to have you because we always need fresh blood. Got to get those easy round one victories. <laughs> And who knows? New eyes on the game is a great way to discover new strategies and get old players out of their deck building ruts. So welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh! and enjoy dueling. I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Dueling takes both luck and skill. Show this by pressing the subscribe and notification buttons. Now, bear witness to these other Davinator 1212 videos. Hmm? Odeon! What is it, Master? It's time to apply the ointment. Mm. Come help me with this. I should have left with Ishizu. I can't reach.